Hello, and welcome to this next installment in the Lincoln Electric podcast series on reopening our welding training center in an era of COVID-19. My name is Brian. Here with me today is Charlie the Rich and Chris Kish, both of whom are welding school instructors here at Lincoln. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. So I guess we'll start with Charlie. Uh, what's your role here at Lincoln? How long have you been here? What do you like to do? Oh, I, uh, my role here is a welding instructor. I've been with the company for 23 years altogether this year. I've been an instructor for the past 10. Started out as a piece worker, worked my way to being an instructor. Um, I enjoy teaching uh, stick welding. I enjoy teaching everything, but stick and TIG are kind of my two favorite uh, processes to teach. I get into that a lot. Do you Fair get into motorsports at all? I do more. I do our basic and advanced motorsports, and okay. also our CWI. I help out with that too. Yeah. Certified welding instructor training program. Mm -hmm. All right. How about you, Chris? Uh, I've been here a little over a year and a half now. Uh, Lincoln relocated myself and my, mm. my wife and wow. I uh, from South Texas mm -hmm. to uh, to work here. So uh, usually, what I've been doing is uh, teaching a lot of the pipe classes here. Uh, currently, right now, I'm teaching our uh, new 16-week comprehensive class mm -hmm. uh, associated with our LEAPS program and uh, our partnership with NC3. Well, as we, uh, as you guys came back to work, um, when you returned to work, what kind of preparation did you have to help out with around the facility to get us up and running again? helped out with a lot with getting the signs hung up and learning all the new rules for what's going on um, yeah you know, we all put arrows up to know which way to walk and okay. stairways to go up and down right and it took a good it took a good week all week to get everything yeah. together for that it was a it was quite a bit of work um, but it what it did is it made for uh, reopening the school to be a little bit smoother with our students we didn't have as many issues as we thought we might have by taking that extra time to prepare yeah and it got us familiar with all the ins and outs of left right walking down the hallway so we would be accustomed to it and help us keep an eye on the students when they get back to make sure they follow the right yeah. direction mm -hmm. so it's kind of a privilege to be open right now it, it was surprising to see how well everybody followed the rules once we had the arrows down on the floor like i don't see people going against the arrows mm -hmm. No, everybody's been there so far three weeks and it's been going really well uh -huh. glad, to, glad to see that so just for our listeners uh, in terms of like the size of our welding school how many booths do we have a hundred hundred and seventy yes 170 booths right so so we are probably one of the largest if not the largest welding school in the United States yes yeah we're up there that's for sure <laughs> So as the students came back, what were some of the most extreme or shocking changes you had to make? Teaching from six feet away. That's probably the hardest thing for us to overcome. We're used to, and I'm sure with any other instructor listening right now, um, getting into that booth with them, watching them weld, and you know, grabbing a hold of their hand and making them weld the right way. That's the hard thing to overcome. And we really pride ourselves here on on being hands-on with our students. I think that's yeah. one of the things that we do very well. So having that social distancing while still instructing in the lab has been pretty difficult. Uh, class uh, demonstrations have also been limited to two students per demo. So mm -hmm. you got a class with 15, 16 students in there or possibly a little bit more. Uh, I mean, that's quite a bit of demos that we're going yeah. through, especially when some of the students may be struggling and they may need some attention right at that moment but they have to wait um, so that that had been a little bit of a problem i guess yeah. um, that we thought we were going to face but we've worked pretty hard at you know critical thinking and problem solving to to make things work with them and the students have been very patient as far as with waiting for us to get through our demos and you know giving us i um, one thing i did for my booth was i dedicated a booth for myself so I could take my mask off. That's my area. Curtains down so I'm by myself. Nobody's in there. Okay. And the students while they're welding, they're taking their mask down when they're in their booth. Nobody's allowed in that booth at all. That's uh that's a hard thing right there. The kids are used to also congregating and talking to each other in their booths and comparing wells. Now they have to stay six feet apart also. So that's their safe area. So yeah. it gives everybody a little bit of a break from 
after doing eight demos with this mask on, talking and trying to holler so they hear you, you yeah. need air. <laughs> and summer, summer's fastly, you know, approaching. It's coming pretty quick, so it's only going to get warmer. Yes. So the, the classrooms have a reduced capacity yes. right now is what you're saying. Yes. So do you spend like 80% of your time in the lab and like 20% in the classroom or how do you Yeah, probably about 80-20. I'm, yeah. I'm about 20% in the classroom learning theory, then we go out to there and practice what we learn out in the booth. So mm -hmm. a lot of well, a lot of hands-on welding time is what they, what they get. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys have, we've had students back in the school for maybe two weeks now, is that right? Two, two, two and, and a half. half. Two two and half. half. Yep. What have you learned in those two weeks? Uh, you know, what I've really learned within the two weeks is uh, the way that I had prepped for class in the past, you know, I have to be a little bit more creative, take a little bit more time to prepare for, for that following day uh, with my students because it is a little bit you know, challenging at first, just like everything that's new is, um, which means you got to take a little bit more time to uh, get things situated and figure out how you're going to be able to effectively instruct the students. Um, I know the first week, you know, it might have taken me maybe an hour to prep, maybe, maybe 40 minutes at the end of the day and 20 minutes in the morning. Uh, but as I've done it more, I've gotten better at it. I've gotten better at uh, you know time management, and uh, it hasn't taken me quite as long to prepare for the next class. So that's been that's been something pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, definitely getting thinking, trying to go home and think of ways to make that next day better with the social distance and getting your self. What can I do differently to get my point across? So that's what I try to do every day. Mm -hmm. on my way home. It's just hard to draw pictures on the boards, looking at all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah. I think a lot of instructors out there are going to feel the same way. I think they're going to they're going to realize they can't teach and prepare to teach the same way that they were they were doing before. So they're going to have to be they're going to have to utilize a little bit of creative thinking mm -hmm. on how they can get to their students. Uh, I know a lot of my students that I have are very strong visual and hands-on learners. So when I'm in class with them in a lecture class or I'm explaining something to them, I'm trying to do the best that I can to paint a visual image for them while I'm talking so that they can comprehend and really get what I'm saying. Mm. So you mentioned that the students have been pretty patient as the school's been opening back up and, that has, and how we've had some policies in place. How else have the, the students been taking it? They've been taking it really well. They, um, I mean, they're, they're respecting the six foot distance. They're yeah. in their booth. And I mean, it, you can tell they're getting frustrated sometimes because maybe things aren't coming as quickly as they would if we were allowed to get in their booth with them. So you can tell a little bit of frustration there, but overall it's been very, very good, very positive. And, try, and yes, as an instructor, we're kind of like their their mentors, their guides, and, and getting them, trying to keep them on track and not lose their focus of what's important, you know, it's good if you're going to get it. And then helping them with positive reinforcement is, has been very, very good for, for me, at least in my class. I'm sure your class too, Chris. Yeah, I mean, yeah. speaking for, for myself and, and for my students, nobody's a really big fan of social distancing while, I'm, while at school, but it's, it's something that is I mean, we need to follow the guidelines. And, uh, you know, I, I experienced a little bit of pushback um, the first couple of days, but once we got a good system going, then they relaxed a little bit. Uh, how I've been trying to approach this is we have, as an instructor, I have one goal, and that's to get my whole class to progress and pass the course. But I, in, in order to do that, you know, coming to the realization that I need to come up with individual goals with my my students and, and utilizing communication with them uh, so that they know what's expected of them I'm not able to just get in the booth and start uh, critiquing them so we need to come up with a game plan ahead of time so that they can stay on course yeah 
I mean, I think that our school is, is fortunate right now because we've been able to bring students back on mm -hmm. site yeah. um, in a reduced capacity, but, but still bring them back on site. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools have had to very quickly adopt new technologies. Um, what about you guys? Have you guys had to adopt anything new from a, a technology standpoint to better do your job? Uh, I've been using the Vertex a lot in my classroom. Okay. As far as running demos, watching the demo on there. I like going to the teacher view on there where I can flip the coupon however I want. Yep. Yeah. And I can have them looking at a different view, trying to get the motion of the, of the electrode while I'm welding down. I've been bringing them um, in the classroom one-on-one -on -one time with them. And I would have them set up that booth, that vertex, like they're in their booth. So I could watch their body position and I'll look at it through um, the, the student's view on the screen and I could see exactly what they're looking at and tell them they're standing in the wrong spot, you're looking at this, you should be looking at that. Hmm. But watching them do their body position has been helping me out tremendously and just getting them to more comfortable in there. And then have them spend time in there as well. Um, I tell them go in there and run three, four passes without any visual cues on to help you. Now, see where you're weak at on those scores. Don't look at your final score, look at these scores of your individual, mm -hmm. and then put those cues on and help yourself. And when you get this high, come back out to the booth, and they've been very, coming out a lot better doing that. You can see the progression a lot faster, because I said, I, this is gonna take the place of me being in the booth with you. This is, this is me, in, me in the booth with you all the time. I said, it's got the visual cue, you're gonna get that muscle memory down, and you're gonna progress a lot faster that way than you are just being out there and me trying to teach you from six six feet away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I've been doing I've been doing similar. I know at the beginning of each day, as soon as we start class, I go over reflection on the previous day's weld progress, and uh, I, I talk to the students. And basically, it's an individual and class group discussion where I'll call on a student and he'll tell me something that he felt he did good with the previous day. Maybe he had struggled the day before that, and, and that day, you know, he kind of overcame a hurdle and, and felt pretty good about it, but I also asked him to bring up something that he might have struggled with. And that gets the whole class talking and discussing. We start kind of problem solving, troubleshooting what, what went wrong and how we can fix it, and from there I'll go to the, the Vertex and I'll do a demo, and I'll put the cues on specific for what the students were struggling with. And I'll tell you, I, I did not realize how much that would help. Um, you know, as an instructor, we, we make sure that we do utilize the Vertex with our students, but incorporating that into our class lecture uh, has worked out amazingly. Um, another thing that I've been doing is utilizing our checkpoint technology. And yeah. basically what that is, is a full production monitoring solution that delivers the precise information you need for maximizing welding productivity and performance. And it really changes the way that you look at your welding operations as a, as a welding educator. Um, when I'm out there and I'm working with the students out in the lab, since I'm not able to get into the booths with them and and, and check on them. Sometimes it helps out so much just to sneak up behind them while they're welding and see what they're doing because their guard's kind of let down, they're focused on their doing. I can see, okay, your travel angle's off. And then I can talk to them about it. I can see your arc length might be a little bit too far. Uh, right now, I, I, I can't get in there and do that. So I've been utilizing Checkpoint to be able to go on. And I can, it has the weld count, how many welds they had done for the day. So I can see who's keeping up, who's, who's working. I can see who's slacking. Uh, it, shows the well time, their arc time. Yeah. Um, I can see, okay, this person had 150 welds, but 50 of them didn't last longer than a second. So they may <laughs> have some issues restarting or, yeah. or sticking their electrode. Um, so we can work on that. So what's uh, a more important parameter to you, arc time or the number of welds that you can see they've done? I think they're both important. Hmm. Um, I think they both go together. Uh, the arc time, helps me to troubleshoot and see, okay, maybe they're having an issue with striking their electrode. Uh, maybe they're having an issue uh, sticking too many times. And, and I've used that and we've, we've come, you know, we've, we've conquered some barriers with that together. The other thing is that it'll, it'll show their regular amperage for the weld 
and it'll show their so their average amperage per weld, and it shows their average uh, voltage. So I can see, you know, what the welding procedure specification I have them welding to. I can see if they're, you know, welding outside of their parameters as far as amperage goes. If if the welding procedure specification is calling for uh, 90 uh, 90 amps plus or minus five, and I see that the student's welding at 110 amps. Well, I know he's welding outside the parameters and then we can talk about it. I can also see the voltage, uh, their voltage is too high. They're, they may be long arcing their, uh, their electrodes, so yeah. keeping too much of, a, of an arc length. So I can critique them a little bit. And what I've seen is that at first, like I said before, I, I got a little bit of pushback. Um, once they saw how utilizing Checkpoint was really helping them progress, now they're coming up to me throughout the day asking me if I can pull it up on the screen right. and then we talk about it. So communication's been really, really important throughout this whole thing. I mean, it's, it's always important uh, when we're working with our students, but right now, you know, it's more important than ever. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Vertex as well had a little bit of pushback at the beginning. I think what they, they felt overwhelmed was what, what was the cues and, and how to get the cues on there just right. So, for example, their, their uh, working angle, um, seeing how much it changes from pass to pass. But once they started getting that down, then it started turning into a little bit more of muscle memory. And when they got out into the booth, they progressed because of that. So. I see the checkpoint could be used. I see a use case there, because since you're not exactly allowed to be in the booth with them mm -hmm. all the time now, they're my eyes. That, it, it's my eyes. You could be at, yeah, you could be at the demo station or up here in your office or at home at night, mm -hmm. and you could, you could, uh, remote into that power wave and see what they've done. Exactly, right? I can do that. I can. Uh, uh, we we have our uh, power wave manager uh, software. I'm able to go in. And, and lock those parameters if I need to to make sure they're not operating outside the WPS. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's good for the students to see that type of technology because when they get into the workforce, mm -hmm. they'll already be used to it. Exactly. And they'll, know, and they'll know why it's there instead of thinking, you know, something negative about it. They'll see this has a great use for what we're doing to keep quality where it's got to be. Yeah. <clears throat> well, any final words of wisdom? for uh, instructors who are going to prepare to return to work soon? Uh, it's not it's not that bad. I mean, it has a big change for us as well to have to wear masks all the day and, and keep that six foot distance, but it's really been working out. One more thing that I did do as far as technology is I would, at the end of the day, I have my students um, lay their welds out on their work tables and I go through and take pictures of them. Mm -hmm. And then I could put them on the monitor and critique their welds, good or bad that way and tell oh, them how to, how to make their mistakes better, uh, fix their mistakes and then um, show them the good things too about their weld also. It's not all bad so that's one good way to see them and actually point to them because looking at a weld from six feet away they all look good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I'd say I'd say be patient you know uh, you can't stress good communication enough with the students uh, so just take that and, and realize that I don't know what the what other instructors are going to come across. I, don't, I mean, I know where we are and uh, uh, the struggles that we may have faced, uh, but I, I'm not 100% sure what they may come across. Uh, all I can really say is don't be afraid to practice, uh, practice creative thinking. Mm -hmm. and you're going to have to be creative. Uh, think outside the box. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Good communication, be patient, and uh, problem-solving skills because we all come across something that's going to stop us for a second and we got to get past it so yeah be open-minded and let the students feel like they're in the loop and anything they could do to, to give you an idea of how to teach better too I, I tell my students that also that's keeping them in the loop i think has helped ease their transition too because it's all everybody's first time going through this so mm -hmm. keeping yeah. them in the loop and asking them for advice on what they think might help us teach better yeah. has been and I've, I've done that as well, uh, asking them for suggestions. They appreciate it, number one, because we're, we're including them. And uh, they've actually come up with some very good ideas. Uh, I've had a couple of them. I know uh, Charlie's been 
utilizing the uh, the pictures with his students and yeah. uh, one of my students even suggested it for us and we actually did that today so I had him in class a little bit shorter in the morning and brought him back in for about 30 minutes at the end of the day and we pulled up their welds on the on the TV and we talked about it I had them give me some stuff that they liked bring up some things that they saw on there that they mm -hmm. thought maybe needed work and we didn't just talk about that, but we talked about how we could fix it. You know, what we could do better next time to avoid any of those defects or discontinuities from, from happening. Yeah. Um, so Photographs of the weld is a good idea. Yep. I mean, you're not all huddled around trying to look at one six inch right. weld joint now. You can you can so blow it up on a big 65 exactly. inch screen. You can zoom into it. Oh yeah, that's great. Slow everything out, gotta do this, angle here, hold your toes, they, they, they can see it and they get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's been, that's been helping out a lot too. Mm -hmm. And you know it's it's one thing they hear us so much throughout the day talk about it. Hold your toes, you know. Pause on your toes. Travel fast through through the throat. Um, watch your rod angle. And, but to to have them in the classroom and, and we're doing the discussion and them to give their suggestion on how they could fix it uh, of what to do. You know that that's a really good way for them to learn as well. Well, great. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us here. Yeah. Keep a lookout for the podcast on the, uh, the Lincoln Electric Education website. And um, we'll be coming out with new episodes on, a, on about a weekly basis. So keep a lookout. Absolutely. Good. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Brian.